Hello everyone, I'm Santiago Santiago and today I'm going to be talking about my top 10 games for 2021. So the ones I enjoyed the most actually because I rarely finish games nowadays, too many games, too little time. So this is my top 10 list of games I enjoyed the most this year, released in 2021 on PC. Doesn't matter if it's a remake, a remaster or a completely new title. If it was released in 2021 and it released on PC in that year, well, it's in this list, so let's get started. Number 10, Halo Infinite's campaign. So I was never a fan of Halo in general, I was more like a Call of Duty player back in the day, so I got into Halo back with Master Chief Collection, I played a few of them for the channel, but I never actually got into them. I got bored pretty quickly, honestly. But I wanted to just get into it for the narrative, so maybe in the future I give it another shot. But Halo Infinite's campaign, I thought it was very very fun on the open world. It's not like a Ubisoft open world since Far Cry 3 that you got a lot of icons on the map and you don't know where to start. And you feel like you're doing a checklist. This is more like, okay, go to these bases, destroy stuff, and it can get kind of repetitive. But with the grappling hook, the movement, the shooting, all feeling so satisfying. I didn't want to put the keyboard and mouse down, I just wanted to keep playing the game. On the story side, I know nothing about Halo, so I skipped all the cutscenes personally because I wanted to play the previous games first or watch a recap video or something. But I'm so into the fighting mechanics in this game. On the multiplayer I enjoyed it, but it seems like it lacks content, honestly. It feels very repetitive, I don't feel like I'm advancing, but on the single player side of things, I think they did a great job. And it's on Game Pass, so it should be pretty easy to get to. Number 9, Sniper Ghost Warrior Contracts 2. So this is one that I wasn't expecting to be on this list like at all, but it's a blast. I hated Ghost Warrior 3 and Ghost Warrior Contracts 1. Those games felt like, I know it's not a AAA game, but they just felt unsatisfying, if that's a real word. And on this one, I like that they took the approach of not doing open world, rather they went and made like more contained maps. So it's more like a corridor with more open locations in between. So it's not like on Ghost Warrior 3 that you got an open world and you got to drive around. You just move from section to section and you got different troops of enemies and into the distance you got to take down targets. So there are many places where you cannot uh, be there physically, you gotta be away, which in a way is disappointing. But at the same time, I found it to be more realistic for the budget of this game. So the shooting itself, I think is fantastic with all the wind that you got to compensate for, depending on the difficulty. Reminds me a lot of Sniper Elite in that sense, but it's been a recurring theme with Sniper games to have that bullet cam. Not, any, not anywhere close to the advanced camera of Sniper Elite with the X-ray cams, but I think it's pretty satisfying. Blowing stuff up with the sniper rifle, shooting at a long distance, trying to get all the targets down without being detected as much as possible. And I think graphically it's pretty attractive considering it's CryEngine. Um, previous titles, I think, didn't use the engine particularly way on an artistic standpoint, so I had a blast with this one. Number 8, Bright Memory Infinite. So this is another game I wasn't expecting put to put on this list, but it was literally the most fun I had live streaming a video game. It's pretty short, it's like 2-3 hours. And it has a lot of minor issues like unskippable cutscenes and the forced stealth section that you get after doing a chaotic fight, which I think they fixed with a patch. They made it that the stealth section, you can just fight your way through it. Thank God. That was my only issue with the game. And it was made by a very small team. But despite that, they had a lot of different ideas trying to be paired into it. Personally, what I was the most into, apart from the waifu, was that uh, the, the combat was so satisfying. When you're shooting the guns, they really feel very powerful. Graphically, it's pretty good, in my opinion. Again, considering the small team, you can see some rough edges here and there. But I think it did the job. But then you can also notice that the game tries to be many things. So, for example, it tries to have some cinematic Call of Duty style. And sometimes you just miss a button prompt and, well, 
you die instantly. And it reminds me, I don't know, like those scripted sequences in Call of Duty, like I saw before. And then other things that jumped in there while playing the game, it just feels like they are showing off what they can do with the engine. So they have stealth, they have wall running, they have bolting, they have... What I did appreciate a lot is that they didn't put a million similar guns that don't feel different to each other. You have one gun of each type and that's what you get. And there's a, also a skill tree that you can improve on. But again, the game is very short, two, three hours, but it's a blast. I mean, for one playthrough, I think it's amazing. Just don't expect, just don't expect it to have a lot of replayability. That's what I'm trying to say. But what is there, the combat and the movement in general, I think is fantastic. I think you should give it a shot. And hopefully the next title for this developer has more length and even better combat, if that's even possible. Number seven, Tales of Arise. So this is a JRPG. I'm personally not into those style of games. I'm more like an action game type of guy. I don't pay a lot of attention to dialogue nowadays because, well, when I'm testing a video game, I just try to get through it to the demanding part. But this is one of those games that I sticked around and played more on my own. And I gotta say, the combat was very satisfying. Usually my issue with JRPGs is that they are either turn-based or kinda turn-based. And this one is the latter. You have a lot of control over your movements, you can swap characters, you can do combos with many characters at once, once you fill certain bar. And then the story, again, I didn't pay a lot of attention, but I loved the look of the game. That cartoonish style, but more into like a comic book-ish style. I don't know how to describe it exactly, but I don't know. I think it looks gorgeous. And the fact that you can also have multiple characters fighting at the same time, I don't know. I just found it super enjoyable. And it runs fantastically on PC, that's one of the best things about it, I would say. That apart from looking good, the art direction being great, it runs on a variety of GPUs pretty well. And it retains the graphics despite you lowering them, so... Huge game, I couldn't finish it yet, but I want to keep going. And again, visually, pff, mind blown. I wish more games took that care with the art style. Number 6. Psychonauts 2. So this is a game that I was already going to love because I played platformers in the past But this one took a wild turn for me. It had a very good sense of humor. The art style is pretty consistent and I don't know. I just love the characters and what they were trying to get across with the game itself the thing that drew me the most from my childhood is like playing those platformers like Crash Bandicoot, Spyro, those 3D early PS1 games. But this one is like more expanded, the levels are more explorable, you got more consistent fighting mechanics. So you got fighting, you got platforming and a good sense of humor. So in my opinion, one of the best games this year, especially if you like platformers and those cartoonish type of games. This is one of them, but it also has a nice message to give to the player. And I just think it's amazing, especially the sense of humor part of it. I think that's the... I don't know what seals the deal for me. Like, yeah, it's like my childhood, but I now have an adult mind, so I can understand a lot of references. I'm talking about childhood, number 5, Crash Bandicoot 4. So this game was released last year on the consoles. And now it's on PC, finally. I'm still waiting for Crash Team Racing to also land on PC, but here we are. So what's Crash Bandicoot for? Well, it's more Crash Bandicoot, but from the other developers, not the original ones. It's supposed to be a sequel from the PS1 games. And I gotta say, I was blown away by what they made here. They did a lot of changes to the formula. They made the levels wider, which was kind of weird on a Crash Bandicoot game. Usually on the PS1 games, it was pretty narrow, a pretty narrow path because of hardware limitations. But now that we have way better technology, I love that they put multiple camera angles, not only from the back of Crash, but only on the sides, but also, but also on the sides that they also allow you to use different characters, use Crash or Coco whenever you want. And 
once you crank up that difficulty when you're doing those time trials, well, <laughs> you're going to suck at it. It will be terrible. You're not going to get great times. You're going to be pissed off. And the levels close to the end, man, those are very difficult. So I love that they kept that essence of Crash Bandicoot on this one. It wasn't lost in the newer era. It still feels like an original Crash Bandicoot game, but with, again, way better technology, more characters, and it doesn't... and it's not afraid of being difficult, despite being a modern game, which surprised me quite a bit. Number four, Forza Horizon 5. So I love racing games, but in general I like to have a balance between arcade and simulation. Forza, Forza Horizon is more like that, like an in-between. You can make it more like a simulation, but not exactly a simulation, or more arcade but not exactly arcade if that makes any sense. You can tweak a lot of variables on how you play the game to get points. You can disable the rewind feature, you can increase the difficulty of the drive avatars. But apart from all that, it has a gorgeous environment in Mexico, so you got different weathers, but it's not like the previous one, Forza Horizon 4, like it was on, on the UK and it was snowing, then it was spring, it was summer. Instead of having different seasons, we have a lot of different environments in the same country. And Mexico is well known for having a lot of different biomes, to put it in some way. So yeah, it's more Forza Horizon 4. And Forza Horizon 4, I think it was my game of the year, the year it released. So this is more of Forza Horizon 4. A lot of racing, a lot of balls to the wall action in certain types of races. I remember still in the previous Forza, sometimes you race a train, a plane. And man, that first level when you get into the game with the music and all the different cars you get to try and that vibe of a festival, I don't know, it just makes me want to play non-stop before I go to bed, so great game, especially if you like driving games. Well, this is again like a mix of arcade and simulation, but not exactly any of them. It's like a perfect mix, a good in-between for people like me that don't like either of those two types of driving games. So yeah, love the game. Number three, Resident Evil Village. So I wasn't expecting to like this game all that much, honestly. I played Resident Evil 7, which this is supposed to be the sequel to. Well, it is a sequel of Resident Evil 7. But personally, I wasn't into RE7 myself. I played all the Resident Evil games from back to the PlayStation 1 to now. And the only one I didn't finish was RE7. I don't know, it was just too much for me. <laughs> I think it was too scary, too... I don't know, it felt, too, it felt too overwhelming. And on this one, they kind of fixed that issue for me. It feels more like first-person Resident Evil 4 in a way. You got the merchants, classic. You got the treasures scattered across the map that you can shoot from hidden locations. You got the inventory management with the, the guns being your, in your case, like in Resident Evil 4 again. And then you get all those wacky characters that are supposed to be serious, but you cannot take them seriously. So I love playing through this game. The environments were very good. A lot of variety on the different bosses that you're fighting when you're scattered around the village. And honestly, I thought that the Dimitres castle was going to be way longer than it actually is. It feels like a very small portion of the game considering the marketing behind it, but Overall, fantastic game. Hopefully, I can see DLC later. The first-person perspective kind of threw me off at first, but I got used to it very quickly. I had to download a mod to extend the FOB, but the guns felt great. With all the inventory management, I felt right at home. I missed that from previous Resident Evil titles after playing Resident Evil 4. I, I like that they took that back from that game. And overall, I felt that the game was a good challenge despite playing on normal difficulty. I also love the characters. Ethan was kind of meh still, in my opinion. They gave him a little bit more personality, but I can't wait to see what they have next for the next chapter in the RE franchise. Highly recommend it if you have a chance to play it. Just make sure to increase that FOB to not get motion sick. Number two, 
Kina Breach of Spirits. So this is a game that blew me away the first time I played it. It looked like a, a Pixar film, but being played on my computer, it was kind of insane. At the beginning it was very easy, the combat was like, okay, with X you do a normal hit, with Y you do a heavy hit. And then I started playing it and playing it, a lot of good atmosphere that um, doesn't have a Disney property for some reason. They should get into that at some point, but it felt like very, very enjoyable. So many colors, so much good effect work going on. The environments themselves are also gorgeous. I don't know, the colors and the effects blew me away. And then on the combat side, while it was fun, close to the middle to end of the game, there was a huge spike in difficulty, which I wasn't expecting, it kinda caught me off guard, but it was a nice surprise. It was like a game pretending to be nice and all, all flowers and colors, and all of a sudden, boom, I kill you. And I don't know, I found it hilarious when I got to those difficult boss fights. But it was enjoyable to keep playing and again one of the few games i finished i don't usually finish games in this channel because i test games and then i jump into the next one well this is one that stuck around and i cleared it to the end and again those middle to end fights really <laughs> made me laugh a lot and i almost threw my controller through the window and finally, number one, GTA Trilogy, the fin of <clears throat> Hitman 3. So, after playing Hitman 1 and 2, and Hitman 2 being my favorite game that year, the year it released, here comes Hitman 3. Some of the bad parts were, okay, it's an epic exclusive, and when it first released, we didn't have a way to play our Hitman 1 and Hitman 2 levels in Hitman 3, because, again, the Epic Game Store exclusivity. After a few days, they sorted that out and the servers were back up. And I just started playing the game. And man, I mean, I loved a lot of levels in Hitman 2. Hitman 1 was more meh to me than Hitman 2, but you can replay them on Hitman 3. So if you own Hitman 1 and 2, you can visit previous levels with the mechanics of Hitman 3, which I found to be very replayable. That's kind of the point of these levels contained open worlds with a lot of options to approach your targets or, or do challenges. And this is more of the same. You get four or five open levels that you can do different challenges in. And there are many ways of taking out your target. And well, after you do that, you unlock more ways to start the game. You can start dressed as a different person in a different area of the map instead of just starting with the assassin outfit in the middle of the road and without a doubt my favorite level in hitman 3 was the manor level the one that there is a big family and there's a murder and you can dress yourself as a detective and solve that murder by interrogating the suspects investigating around and just felt like okay this guy came to this house to kill one or two people and get some collectible thing that they needed like a file but all of a sudden you can just dress as a detective and solve the crime <laughs> which i found hilarious i love that in hitman games you could completely miss it if you didn't dress yourself as a detective so yeah i love all the options that you got in single maps in the game then all the challenges over it so you can completely master a level and do whatever you want in it so yeah the the range of things that you can do just makes it endlessly replayable to me, at least until you get bored of the same level over and over. But again, it's nice to experiment around, try to make the perfect assassination being silent or just boss the wall shooting and probably dying because you have very low health. So yeah, huge fan of Hitman 3. I hope they can do more. They already announced a year or two for this game, so I'll be on the lookout for new maps. And hopefully we get something extra cool with the 007 game they're working on because IO Interactive announced that they're working on a 007 James Bond game so that was interesting we'll see what it comes out of that hopefully a good game that's probably like two three years away at the minimum 
So yeah, we'll see what happens. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know your top 10 for 2021 down in the description. No, in the comments. And many games were pushed back to 2022. So many of the games for this year were pushed behind. So it felt like a very slow year this time around with all things opening up again. So we'll see what next year holds for us. But as of right now, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next year. Good stuff. It fixed. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> that scared the crap out of me. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs>